Caitlin Clark headbutts a basketball. A referee is taken out of a game. And Deasia Fair goes off. What is up, awesome people of the internet? Here is your recap for day two of the 2024 NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament. And we start with the first game of the day, which was between number six, Tennessee, and number 11, Green Bay. And this game was kind of close in the beginning, but Tennessee picked up the pace to easily defeat Green Bay 92-63. to Now, this game was all about Rakia Jackson and her putting up a scoring clinic. Uh, she went 10 of 14 from the field, finishing with 26 points in the game, and she almost had a double-double with nine rebounds as well. Now, while Rakia Jackson was getting buckets, she was getting those twos to fall, we had Sarah Puckett and Jewel Spear, who were efficient from the three, going a combined five of nine from the three-point line, nodding in 14 points and 13 points, respectively. Fun fact about this game, this was the first game back at North Carolina State for Tennessee head coach Kelly Harper, who... Uh, previously served as a coach for NC State from 20, 2009 to 2013. We will see Tennessee take on NC State on Monday, so that should be pretty fun. All right, now on to the next one where we saw UConn take down Jackson State, 86-64. to 64. Now, this game looked like an early blowout in the first quarter, but Jackson State battled back and managed to make it a very quality game. Uh, but it was UConn who showed out at home to give Gino Oriema a win on his 70th birthday. The team had custom shirts made, which led to some laughs. To address the elephant in the room, can you just talk about the shirts you're wearing? Um, like, who designed those? Did you get to pick the picture on the shirt you're wearing? Um, just tell me as much as you can about those shirts. But on the court, the team took care of business with Aliyah Edwards, Ashlyn Shade, and Paige Beckers joining the 20 plus party. And I just want to give a, 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 a shout out to Paige Beckers and note that she had a double-double in this game with 28 points and 11 rebounds. She also had three steals, seven assists, and if you're wondering how many turnovers she had, well, that would be zero. After the game, I thought it was pretty awesome how Gino gave props to Jackson State head coach Tamika Reed because she has taken Jackson State to a new height and should absolutely be considered for a power five role. And so after you, you get a win like this, uh, what was your message to, to Coach Reed after the game, especially with the way that women's college basketball is changing and the parity that's, you know, forming in between different programs? Yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to commend her on her season, you know, going undefeated in your league. I don't care what league you play in. I don't care who you play against. You play, you know, 18 conference games and you win them all and you win your conference tournament, um, that's a hell of a job. And it's not like the first time, right? I mean, she's been doing this for quite some time now there. And a lot of these coaches that work like that and have tremendous success and put together, put together great teams and have put together a terrific program, nobody knows about them. They certainly don't get on TV enough. And they certainly don't get enough recognition um, and I wanted to let her know that and that I wanted to um, I, I wanted to put myself out there and for her and I think we need coaches like her um, to be celebrated and um, bigger schools need to not keep recycling coaches that are let go by other power five schools, whatever you want to call them, that they should start looking outside the box a little bit because there's a lot of great coaches out there. And she's one of them. More on Coach Reed and Jackson State in a future video. Indiana took down Fairfield 89 to 56. And normally when we talk about Indiana, it's always, rightfully so, talking about the amazing McKenzie Holmes. But for yesterday's game, the story was Sarah Scalia and how much of a bucket she is. She, Sarah went 50% from the three-point line to finish the game with 27 points. Now, even though the final score was pretty wide, uh, the game itself was close early on, but Indiana did turn it up a notch 
on defense, which led to some great offense, and they ran away with the game. On to number nine, Kansas versus number eight, Michigan, in an overtime thriller, which got the Jayhawks the win with a score of 81 to 72. The game was pretty back and forth throughout, but it was the late game heroics by Zakaya Franklin who knocked in a clutch three pointer with 12 seconds left to go in the fourth quarter to tie it and send it to overtime. A lot of big threes tonight, but none bigger than um, you know, fifth year senior Zakaya Franklin. I couldn't be prouder uh, of her. You know, that's, that's all she's done is, is help uh, change our program around. And I think it's really very fitting. Maybe one of the bigger plays in Kansas women's basketball history. And from there, Kansas took care of business, taking down Michigan. Zakiah Franklin would go on to finish the game with the efficient 22 points and five rebounds. And also, she gave four assists as well to secure the dub for Kansas. Notre Dame defeated Kent State 81 to 67. Now this game really was over from the jump with Notre Dame getting off to a huge lead early on. Kent State did get it together and try to do something of the game, uh, but the Irish was just too hot to handle in this one. And yes, of course, Hannah Hildago did do her thing for Notre Dame. More on that in a sec, but the player of the game for Notre Dame really was Sonia Citron, who's tied her career high with 29 points in this one. Sonia was locked in from the jump, and it showed not just in scoring, but she grabbed six boards, had four assists, and even had two steals. And speaking of steals, freshman Hannah Hidago never met a steal that she did not like. She finished the game with six steals in the game. She also had a double-double with 14 points and 11 assists. The Irish move on to fight another day. NC State defeated Chattanooga 64-45 to in a very low-scoring game that saw the Wolfpack really kick it into gear during the second half. Players of the game include the dynamic duo of Isaiah James and Sanaya Rivers, who scored 19 points and 16 points respectively, and center River Baldwin added in a double-double to the mix with 10 points and 11 rebounds. Now, that is what happened in terms of the players for the game. But y'all, the referees was the real story in this one. Uh, this was the first time I'd ever seen a referee get replaced mid-game, not due to injury, but due to a conflict of interest that was not disclosed earlier. Tommy Paris started off the game as one of the refs, and at halftime, she was replaced by Angelica Suffren, who actually worked the game earlier against Green Bay and Tennessee. The reason for the replacement is because, quote, it was learned after the game had started that umpire two, Tommy Paris, had a, had a background conflict that, if known, would prevent her from working that assigned game. Uh, Tommy received a master's degree from Chattanooga. So yeah, that was pretty interesting. The NCAA made the ref change at halftime and decided not to use the game's standby official, quote, because it provided the most on-court experience and allowed the game to maintain a full officiating crew plus standby. So yeah, something new every day. And speaking of standby officials, the USC Texas A&M Corpus Christi game featured a standby ref when ref Michael Price had to leave the game in the second quarter after getting Injured on a non-contact play, he was running down the court and then he grabbed the backside of his thigh, which for sure is not a good sign at all. Um, he was checked out by USC training staff and tried to come back in the game, but he couldn't do it and was replaced by standby Demoya Pugh. Uh, now, I will say this uh, was the first time that I had ever witnessed a home PA announcer and crowd positively get behind a ref. Prayers up for Michael Price as he recovers from his injury. Now guys, let's actually talk about this game where USC defeated Texas A&M Corpus Christi 87 to 55. USC dominated the game from the jump, going on a massive 21 to four run to start the game. For the Trojans, Rhea Marshall got a double-double with 10 points and 11 rebounds. Also, Juju Watkins and Mackenzie Forbes both added in 23 points. But for USC, their bench got increased minutes and some made the most of it offensively, including senior India Otto, who had her team going wild when she hit a three-pointer. 
All right, on to Iowa, where they defeated Holy Cross 91-65. to Now, the talk after the game was all about Caitlin Clark, who had a poor shooting night and was visibly upset throughout a large portion of this game, and she let the refs have it. Of course, Caitlin having an off night isn't the same as, as an off night for other players because Caitlin still finished with 27 points, 10 assists, and 8 rebounds. Uh, but it was the 6 turnovers, and uh, it was her complaining to the refs about calls that really was the star of the show. Um, the cameras even cut to her dad in the crowd who was telling her to stop complaining. At one point, Caitlin was so frustrated that she even headbutted the ball. Um, after the game, here's what Caitlin Clark had to say. There's a clip. People think your dad was taking No, I was yelling at the ref. Mm -hmm. I already saw. What, so it's what crazy. was really going on there? Because like, like, I'd like to clear up what really happened. <laughs> well, I was so. getting frustrated at the ref. People thought I was talking to my dad, which was yeah. crazy. I was not talking to my dad. <laughs> was, he telling, uh, was he telling you that? Oh, I don't know. I, I have no idea. Oh, okay. um, he, probably, he, he was probably that? agreeing with me. You know him. He's probably like, hey. Uh, but no, I saw that. Does he, ever, does he ever say anything like during game like, hey, calm down to you? Or is Bring he usually ahead. just on your on your? On oh, your side no. He definitely tells me to calm down sometimes. I think the best thing about my dad is like he's the most chill person, but when he played, like he was the same fiery competitive <laughs> right. person that that I am. So like I love him to death. Like he's always been my biggest fan. He was my first coach, um, but I think he knows how I'm wired better than anybody. Yeah. So um, that guy has my back, and I love him to death. But yeah, I think it just shows kind of what camera angles can do sometimes. Right, they, they create that. their own stories. So yeah. just other things to note about this game is that Hannah Stokey didn't play much, only playing 10 minutes. Coach, um, could you tell us what was up with Hannah not playing in the second half, and, and are you concerned at all about Monday or with her? She didn't feel well, and it just wasn't worth putting her in there when we didn't have to have her. And so just trying to save her for Monday. Addie O'Grady stepped in for Stokey and brought in 14 points and five rebounds for the squad. And the glue, Kate Martin also added a double-double to her belt with 15 points and 14 rebounds. UCLA defeated California Baptist 84 to 55, and they did so convincingly without their six foot seven star, Lauren Betts, who was wearing street clothes due to an apparent foot injury. But the Bruins was fine because they had Chris Osborne, who did her thing leading the squad with 15 points, 15 rebounds, and y'all, She's only 5'9 and got 15 rebounds. Also, she was very, very close to getting a triple-double um, with nine assists. Gabriela Juarez and Kiki Rice also added in 19 points and 20 points each. Gonzaga came back from behind to defeat UC Irvine 75-56. to Gonzaga had a super rough start for the game, but they did get it together in the second quarter, going on to cruise to victory. For the Bulldogs, they were led by, of course, Yvonne Ejim, who brought in a double-double with 25 points and 14 rebounds. And the Trong sisters also added in a combined 24 points for Gonzaga. Now, for Gonzaga, this game was extra special because they did it at home to a sellout crowd, hosting a NCAA tournament game on their home floor for the first time since 2013. And who will Gonzaga face? Well, they will face Utah on Monday. Utah beat San Diego State 68-54. to The Utes came out of the gate starting off running with a 20-3 run in the first quarter, uh, but the Jack Rapids did answer back with a 21-7 run of their own in the second quarter. Then Alyssa Peely was like, enough is enough, and she went off in the second half, securing the win for Utah. She finished the game with 26 points and seven rebounds. All right, let's move on to the thriller between Syracuse and Arizona. Yes, the Orange defeated the Wildcats 74-69, to but I think that this game was really summed up by looking at the three-minute mark in the game when it was three minutes left in the fourth quarter. Jada Williams made some free throws to put Arizona up, 66 to 61, Syracuse missed the shot. Arizona is running back down on a fast break and Skylar Jones gets a pass that it was way too hot to handle and uh, she gets a turnover. And maybe you think, okay, not a big deal. You get, a, you get a turnover, you're still up by five. You can still win this game. However, uh, you, were, you would be wrong because the star was just about to start shining. And that was De'Asia Fair who took over the game from that moment on. She comes down the court, boom, hits a jumper. 
then gets a steal. Then she makes another jumper. Then she makes a three. Now Syracuse is up 68 to 66. Arizona turns over the ball again. Then we get a DeAsia Fair slow motion walk down that she capped off with a step back jumper. And the game was basically over from there. She hits a couple of free throws and Syracuse comes from behind to win the game. DeAsia Fair scores Syracuse's last 13 points to finish the game with a whopping 32 points, four assists, and six steals. DeAsia, you go down with that injury at the end of the third quarter and then a historic run for you in the fourth. What's going through your mind throughout that entire sequence? Uh, I was just hoping that it wasn't anything, you know, serious. Of course, at first, you know, when stuff like that happens, you think the worst. And at first, it was just overwhelming. But I knew once I, I felt good or I, I knew I was able to go, in the back of my mind, you know, my team is still counting on me. If I can go, I'm going to go. You know, I'm counting on me, and so is everyone that's watching and my family. So that was the mindset to get back out there. You know, the other day you texted Coach Jack asking her if you could have this last dance. And in order to keep dancing, you had a historic run there in the, in the fourth quarter. What was it like going through that, and what was your mindset heading into that stretch where you guys were down four? Um, I think, you know, we've been there before. And when you have experience, you know what it takes to win, and you know what it takes to, you know, have success. So I think, you know, the score that I am and the confidence that I have and the confidence that my teammates and coaching staff, you know, instilled in me all the all throughout the year is just, you know, keep going. It's just keep going and, you know, trust your work. Uh, coach, obviously you've watched a lot of the H Fair play, uh, basketball over the last five years. Where does this moment rank in terms of everything that you've watched? It's all great, you know. The moments with her, the, the greatest moments is off the basketball court. The greatest moment is, is, is when when things don't go well and we try to figure out how to make it go well and when you don't have an answer and, and when wrong happens for no reason at all and, and we try to figure it out together and we did by just waking up the next morning and realizing that we survived it. Those are the times that really matter the most. These games here are fun, fun for a family, fun for the fans, it's fun for you guys, but the biggest uh, blessing and moments that she and I had together, it didn't touch the basketball court. It was helping her through the toughest times, the thing called life. Ole Miss defeated Marquette 67 and 55. Now this was a semi-close game throughout with Ole Miss keeping a handle on the game throughout um, scoring points, but also defending well, especially in the second half. Marquette had a sliver of a chance to come back in the fourth, but Ole Miss finished the game off with a 12 to five run. Um, Player of the game for sure was Madison Scott for Ole Miss, who finished the game with 20 points, six rebounds, and four assists. Creighton defeated UNLV 87 to 73. Creighton won or tied every single quarter and was led by the dynamic duo of center Lauren Jensen and Emma Ronzik, who scored 25 and 23 points respectively. And even though Creighton got the dub, I have to give a giant shout out to senior Desi Ray Young, who did her thing and played her heart out in this game, uh, finishing the game with a extremely efficient 30 points and nine rebounds, though it wasn't enough to get UNLV the dub. Uh, Creighton lives to fight another day as they get ready on Monday to meet UCLA. West Virginia took down Princeton. 63 to 53 and they won off the back of their star JJ Kennerly who's who played all 40 minutes in this game and dropped 29 points and seven rebounds her fourth quarter performance really was the thing that sealed the deal for the Mountaineers and we finish off talking about Oklahoma who almost got got defeating Florida Gulf Coast 73 to 70 Florida Gulf Coast started off the game red hot uh, leading by 10 at the end of the first quarter and Oklahoma walked them down from there for the rest of the game, beginning to settle in defensively and getting some stops. Now, for the game itself, in my opinion, Florida Gulf Coast just ran out of gas. They seemed to spend so much energy getting that lead in the first quarter, and they just couldn't maintain it. They, they couldn't maintain the same momentum that they had, and that was it. They tried to make a run at, at the end of the game, but it just wasn't enough to get the dub. 
Skylar Van and the Sooners get the dub. All right, guys, that is your recap for day two of the NCAA tournament for the women. Thank you so much for watching. Shout out to all the amazing folks on Patreon who is who are financially supporting this channel. If you all want to support me over there, please do so. Hit that like button and that like button. Um, all right, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe button. And until next time, guys, bye.